man, man, what's up, what's up? What's up? Welcome to another episode of Pierre's Panic Room. You know how I do it. I always have a fly guest, and this episode is no different, y'all. Yes, we got a legend on the R&B, legend on the show. Um, I'm excited about having this dude, because we came from the same place. So uh, I'm going to see about how he grew up and how I grew up, see how it matches. But before I get into the, uh, the interview, you know I got to read y'all comments. What y'all got, we're going to get off y'all chest. All right, this is from, wow, this is from the Michael Collier episode. Uh, Candace Richardson 6005 says, Pierre's question and commentary are flawless. Pierre's Panic Room is the best podcast. Well, I ain't gotta read no more. That's all I need to hear. No. <laughs> the best podcast, not just for laughs, but a safe space to tell personal narratives, engaging and authentic. P.S. I need a Pierre's Panic Room t shirt for the before homecoming. I know that's right, girl. I know that's right. All right, well, they'll be on sale soon. Okay. All right, this is from my girl, Angela Stanton. Y'all yeah, remember her, but she keeps it 100, boy. Um, this guy, the, at the Dark Side King says, dude is hysterical. I guess me, because she ain't the dude. The dude is hysterical in his defense of the evil Democratic Party. I ain't got money, but I just said my opinion, man. I'm, I'm hysterical. All right, that's funny. Oh, oh, here's another one from Pasquale. Well, PA, man, what is it? Pasquale 66, 96. I mean, you about to read all that. It is what it is. Uh, they say, hmm, damn, Angela destroyed this dude. First of all, motherfucker, it ain't this dude. You know, my name is Pierre, okay? It says Pierre's Panic Room, so ain't no this dude. This dude, he was being funny, but you can't come with no knowledge when Angela's on point and passion about her message. I can do what I want to, bro. It's, it's Pierre's Panic Room. All right. This is from my man Slink Johnson show. Candace Richardson 6005 says, two grown ass men keeping it real. This is what an honest conversation looks like, feels like, and sounds like. I'm going to holler at you, uh, Candace Richardson, because you've been on the, you've been, you've been in the DMs nicely or in the comments, bro. I appreciate it. All right, y'all. I'm excited, man, for this guest. Like I said, we're from the same hometown. Musical legend, R&B legend, y'all. Give it up. Uh, we're going to find out more about it. I mean, we're going to really delve into too many songs. I want to know about him more as a person, man, because I hadn't heard from him in a minute. We're going to see what happens, you know, where he's been at for a while. Give it up for the one and only Mr. Tony Terry! Look at you, look at you, man. Look at you, man. Yeah, you got your own show. Yeah, I do. I, yeah, I do. I'm glad you came from my, to my own show. But no, you, you, you still look young, man. You still man, look like no, you're 22. Yes, you do. Look, no, what's sir. your cash app, man? Let me touch it real is that, quick. Is that what it is? Let me no, touch the cash app, No, I guess, I guess, I guess what we say, half black don't crack? Half black. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm half black. Okay. <laughs> no, man, for real, though. I, I, yeah. I, you know, I like seeing artists who've been around for a while and they still looking good. They still take care of we themselves, gotta, I mean, you're trying to stay viable in the game. You got to put in the work. I know that's right. You, you, you actually work out, right? You do work out. Yeah. I can tell. Okay, okay. I know you're blessed with just that look. You know, <laughs> no, now, no. Some people, yeah, yeah. It's like I that. I was a real skinny dude, man. Now, I hear, I'm happy to hear. I remember you. You from, you from my hometown, Washington, D.C. Yes, sir. But you're born in North Carolina. Well, yeah, I'm born in North Carolina, right. so I claim both as home. Okay, dude. So how old was you when you came to Washington, D.C.? Uh, four, five. No, no, you're from Washington, D.C., bro. <laughs> no, no, we, we, we claiming you all the way. But no, I used no, to spend no, every summer, or we, my right. sisters and I, my cousins, Spent every summer in North Carolina right. with my grandmother. So what? So what was the makeup of your family? Your mother, father in the house, sister, brother. How oh, absolutely. People? My my parents were together until they left this earth. Oh, um, nice. Interestingly, my mother and her brother married my father. My mother married my father. My mother, my father's sister married my mother's brother. Why? why, why? So we would I mean, the siblings were double first cousins. Were y'all like Ark? You said you went in Arkansas or, 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 or West Virginia? You said North Carolina. What part, no, what part no, of North Carolina no. do that at? Where no. do that at? Okay. That's not quite. Let me see how many fingers you got on one hand, man. <laughs> extra finger or something? No, extra I'm extra finger. Finger. that's my toe. That's no, my toes. No. Oh, that was. <laughs> well, uh, what do you remember before you got into the music? Let's say up before 15, being in D.C. What did, what did D.C. remind you of back then? Oh man, D.C. was Chocolate City. Okay. For real, for real. Okay. It was a black city. Mm -hmm. um, we had Mayor Marion Barry Come running the town. In fact, I th I think that I am doing what I'm doing today because of the summer youth employment Come program that Mayor Marion Barry yes, started. Yes. And I believe that if he were alive today, mm -hmm. he'd still be the mayor. He could be. He could be. In spite of all his flaws. And, and, and here's the thing people don't understand who weren't who don't know about Marion Barry. They're like, how'd you vote that crackhead back again? First of all, first of all, let me break down the video. 
If you watch the video, he asked her, how do you use this? So right. obviously you ain't no crack it if you had to like, how do you He was it? curious, though. Yeah, he, yeah he, but he wanted that. He came there for the JJ, okay? That's yeah. what you're right. Okay, some dudes do anything for, for, for the JJ. I've done some stuff, but not crack, but you know what I'm saying? For the JJ and shit. So he was one for that. So when, people, when he got voted again, you know, people were like, what, what? I'm saying, you don't understand what he did for that city, man, for Washington, D.C. Yeah, he, he made, made sure he hired things. a lot of black people when he came in, you know. Um, you know, he he started with SNCC. I don't know if people know that. You know, you know he's back in I think it was back in North Carolina, Alabama, or something like that. He's always, right, so they yes. sent him up to, up up here because my father and my uncles in politics. To he made sure that he came up here to start getting the black people for voters and stuff for here. Yeah. Didn't know that. And then he, from then I didn't know that. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm teaching you here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Panic room. Yeah, something. Yeah. Now, 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 tell me this. Okay, I came from Germany to Washington D.C. in 1978. I'm gonna tell wow. you, some epic happened. And tell me if you remember this because you look like you was around the same time. Do you remember the Terrence Johnson situation? Oh, yeah, absolutely. For those who don't know, it was a young brother, two brothers, one was named Terrence Johnson. Somebody had broken into and robbed a, 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 a laundry, laundry mat back then. It was 1978. And they said the suspects were in a brown car. So at night, him and his brother were driving a brown car. A cops pulled him over. They said they harassed him because they didn't have no license or reg no registration. Took him back to Hyattsville Station and harassed him. And Terrence, you know, had enough of it, took the pistol and shot the two cops and killed them. They were like 25, 23 and 25-year-old white cop cops. And it became one of the first storms of black yeah, you know, big, cops big, shooting big, black big, people big and stuff storm. like that. Yeah. And um, the crazy thing about him was uh, having 78, 78, and he was about six, 15, 16, around the same time. He was about 15, 16, 78, yeah. Yeah. roughly, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and young brother, light skin, light looking dude. You was young. I don't know how nice looking you was back then. But I'm gonna go with. I, I saw the real, video. I was real handsome. Man. Okay, there it is. Okay, so you know, <laughs> you, you know, you could have been almost Terrence. You know. And, and, but yeah, did you ever? And unfortunately, the end of the story was he did um, some years in jail, got out, couldn't really cope with how things were going, and then him and his brother robbed the bank, and he just when they got caught like behind a building, and they got chased away, and he committed suicide because yeah. he didn't want to go back to jail. Um, did you ever run into anything like that kind of stuff or, you know, any heavy stuff with, with the police? Violence? Well, with the being police. In DC? Or, yeah. No, well, not with the police directly. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I lost a god sister um, to violence, but oh, wow. not, it wasn't, a, you know, something that was between her and the police. Right. And, you know, somebody came in and decided that they were going to take her life. But no, nah, man, I, you know, I have, my, my parents were together my, the whole time, you sure. know, until they left, as I said. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my father... Took, would take a particular route home, and he would be like, if I see you on this route anywhere on these corners, you know, we're going to have a problem. Oh. So I was never outside on the corner, especially when my father came home. Sure. You know, sure, sure, I was sure. usually working on some music. I was singing somewhere, and I think that's probably why it started. Like, I started taking it seriously because I couldn't be outside, right, you know right, what I mean, right, where, right. My, where my boys were. And interestingly, every single one of them dudes are gone. Wow. Yeah, all of them, yeah, not yeah. most of them. They're yeah. all gone. Yeah, yeah. Did, 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 do you think they did they have fathers in their lives? Um, a couple of them did. did yeah. yeah. I think that's very important. Like you know, I, 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 I see, don't I don't think their fathers threatened them like like, like yours. I, don't I had a military father. <laughs> what, what was it? Was it? Because we have the same thing. Was it a little rough being light skin, curly hair, pretty no. back in the hood? <laughs> but I had it. I, I caught it. I caught really? it. Really? What? I mean, I grew up in Maybe Landover. I'm more handsomer than you. I, mean. I, I, I don't know. I grew up <laughs> in Landover, in Palmer Park, Come which on. is the same neighborhood that Sugar Ray Leonard of course. grew up in. And um, I was, uh, <laughs> by, by the time I was in, let's say, junior high school, right. I was pretty set in the music thing, in the okay. music game, okay. right? You know, okay. I, was, I was a singer, and I knew I was a singer. Like, I never had to figure out what my life was going to be. I knew I was going to be, Dope. it was going to be music. So um, I remember being in the talent show in the seventh grade. And when I, I won the talent show, and after that, I was Mr. Popular. Nice, you know? nice, nice, yeah. nice. And then I won in the eighth grade, and then I won in the ninth grade. And right, I was, right, I right, right. You, because I, I grew up in Capitol Heights, Landover, mm, D.C. too, but yeah. whatever. That's, yeah, yeah. If people don't, don't know, like, like That's all D.C. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> C. Clay one street over from, right, from D.C., right, you know, right. it's still the same thing. I went to Crossing. For a second, you went to Parkdale, I think you said. I did, for a year. For a year. Then you went to Duke Ellington. Mm -hmm. Is that a school that you have to audition to get in type yes. of thing? Yes. You do? Like, yes. like fame? Yeah, oh. and I didn't know how to audition. Okay. Um, I, had, I actually wanted to go to Duke Ellington because I saw fame. Wow, okay. I saw it on okay. TV and I thought, okay. wow, they, they're singing and acting and dancing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. painting. I mean, all these artistic people in, you know, that are able to express themselves mm -hmm. artistically mm -hmm. and, and still have their academics. And then I heard about Duke Ellington 
And I asked my mother if I could audition, and she said no. She said no so fast. I don't even right. think I finished asking her the question wow. before she said wow, no. Right, right, She's like, right. no. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Was there a reason why? No, just no. She said no, because I said so. <laughs> wow, okay. You know what I okay. mean? No wonder you survived. My, yeah. my granddaddy would rough my little tight on you, boy. My mother would only paint one hand off her fingernail sometimes. And she come to my school, and, my kid, and the kids at school be like, "Your mother is so bad. She right. only paints one right. of right. her hands." Right, right, right. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah. But wow. Uh, interestingly, the next year, I went and auditioned for Duke Ellington without okay. telling my mother, and uh, I didn't know how to audition. So I'm talking about like green, green, green. Now you're supposed to go into an audition. If you're a singer, you have your sheet music, and you hand it over to the the accompanist, sure. and they play for you. But I nobody told me that. Right, right. So I go in with um, an OJ's album. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, for the love of money. Arm. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, it was LTD. Oh, okay. Um, and I was singing uh, Where Did We Go Wrong. You remember okay. that song? Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Oh, you're trying to get me to sing. That no, was no, good. No, no, no. Let me look at that. Let me get a little bit of that, that, good. that right there. Where did we go wrong? Nice. With love. I do remember and that maybe now. maybe we can fix it. So yeah, anyway, yeah. so I had the album yeah, under my arm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had the album under my arm, and I go in for my audition, and I'm like, okay, so uh, I'm looking around, like, where's the record player? They were like, um, that's not how we do it, sir. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what do, what do you mean? That's how I do it. Um, so they told me how I was supposed to audition, and I ended up auditioning a cappella, and one of the founders of the school was there. Mm-hmm. And he didn't like me. In fact, if it were for him, up to him, I wouldn't have gotten in. Wow. But one of the female acting teachers liked me enough that she persuaded him to let me in. And by the time I graduated, he and I were good friends. Okay, okay, yeah. nice, nice. Oh, did, did you go to school with anybody we know? Like, um, Stacy Lattisaw. What? Yeah, um, Stacy Lattisaw. I went to school let with, me uh, be your angel. that's right, that's angel, right. Um, uh, Lebohan Morake, who ended up writing the music, the score to The Lion King. Really? He was a South African wow. exchange student. Uh, he was in my class in, in choir and, and English. Heavy, heavy, yeah. heavy. So, heavy, you know, he made a lot of yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of light's been shown on Duke Ellington now because of Dave Chappelle. You know, he helped put that out there. But for those there, yeah, check out Duke Ellington. And not just Dave Chappelle, Anthony Anderson, uh, yeah. Denise Graves, who is the star of the Metropolitan Opera, um, mm. which is, you know, fun, 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 Right, fun. right, right, sure. Um, and when I was there shooting my episode of Unsung, I saw outside that they had all of those names plus your boy nice. on okay, the plaque now. outside. Okay. And I was okay. like, wow. That is so cool. Ain't nobody told me nothing. nothing. Right, right, right. A little, <laughs> little brother from Park, Parkdale. I'm from, 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 from Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. Okay, so you, leave, you graduate from there. Do you have a, 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 a angle? Do you know I'm about to do this after I graduate? You say, That's crazy. Well, okay, so as I said, the Summer Youth Employment Program that Marion Barry was the founder of, or right. started. Sure. Uh, when I aged out, um, Mr. Malone, who was one of the founders of the school, he came to me and put his hand on my shoulder and said, you're ready. Now, if that happened, you were ready. I mm. mean, we, re- we revered him so much right. that, you know, that was like a calling card from God. Nice. So I took that and went and got a job. <laughs> regular job. A regular job. What did you work at? What, what kind of job? Howard working? Johnson's. Hell I worked no. at Howard Johnson's. I was a waiter. I was an excellent waiter. A singing waiter. Well, I sang a little bit, but oh, okay, really right. more to myself. Though. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I would sing at a couple of tables, you know, and get that little extra tip. Right, 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 right. That's nice, nice. Like I would sing Happy Birthday or something like that. Right, sure. Um, but I did that for about six months waiting tables. I was really, really good at it. So uh, we had this manager of the restaurant, she's a redhead lady, and just fussed and argued with everybody except me for whatever reason i have no mm-hmm. idea i was able mm-hmm. to calm her down so she came in one day she was fussing at everybody and everybody's walking on eggshells and I, and uh and i'm standing at her office door and she's like what do you want and i'm like uh i want to be in the management training program can you handle it i was like yeah i can handle it next thing i know i was off the training wow and then i had to convince the uh the higher ups at howard johnson that I was worthy of this investment they were going to make. So, right, right. You know, I made them think that I had Howard Johnson's tattooed on my ass. Well, that's funny. But you know, it's funny. <laughs> with me, you know, I, I, I wanted to be a comedian. I was funny in school. Then I saw Eddie Murphy, and I was like, I want to do that, you know, the delirious. I never wanted to work a job, you know, like, because when I was coming, we come up in D.C., everybody wants you to go get a government job, a good old government job. Government job. Get right. that government job. But I fought against it. I, I did every job that wasn't something I knew I was going to stay. 
landscaping, construction, I didn't give a, whatever, building decks. I didn't want a, a, a job job. So I'm surprised a guy who said, but you wanted to move up in well, management. Well, I mean, I, well, I said that I convinced them that I wanted to move up in oh. management. I always knew that that wasn't my calling card. Oh, okay. I was okay. just trying to get that, that money. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. Um, I was 18. I was making about $750 a week, which oh, at, that's a lot in of money. the 80s was a lot of yeah, money. Yeah, a lot of money. Yeah. I had a nice car. Um, and then I heard about this audition that Mike Malone, one of the founders of the Duke Ellington School of the Arts, was holding in New Jersey at the Crossroads Theater, which is one of the premier black theaters in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, he was holding an audition, and just knowing that, I quit my job. I told the assistant manager one day, you the, you the boss. Mm -hmm. He thought I was joking. I took all my keys. I left them on the counter. I said, I'm out. I'm not coming back. Right. And I drove to New Jersey and auditioned for the job and got it, and then found out it was only paying $35 a week. What? <laughs> you left 700. I left it. It was you gone. I could, it, was, it was no going back. It was no going and, back. And that's a, was that a musical? It was a musical, Black Nativity. Now, let me ask you, it seems like, is that the road you first started wanting to go on? Musicals? I, or, I won't or say singing? wanted to start going on. Okay. Well, it was singing, but it was just on stage. It wasn't like there just, were, yeah. It wasn't concert, you know, right, radio right, records. Right. Um, to be honest, I didn't know what it was going to be, what medium it was going to take. Although I had been in the studio. Uh, at Sigma Sounds in Philly when I was 14 or 15, my mm. parents financed the project. Uh, turns out with this drug kingpin and he stole the, it was a whole bunch oh, of Oh yeah, you said Philly? You said Philly? Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I know Philly. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, so so we get the job and it's paying 15 bucks, I mean $35 a week. And so we couldn't afford to live anywhere. So for six months I slept under my dressing room table. Really? My cousin I slept under it. his and about four others of us that came up from D.C., you know, the, the yeah, theater was gracious. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we, 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 we right. felt good about that. Right. We had a place to stay, and we were all together. Okay. Uh, it was the best time of my life. I know, that's right. I mean, I mean, we were broke. Right, but anyway. we, had to, we had to share hot dogs, right, right. spread apples in half, right, right, and right. Snicker bars in half. But, but chasing the dream and having camaraderie, man, it was great. I was having the best time of my life. And didn't even know it. Life. No, I knew even, it. Oh, you knew it? I did. I did know it. Oh, wow. It. I was okay. loving every minute of it. But let me ask you, okay, so you go from something like that. How do you get noticed enough to even do backup singing? Because you were already with Sweet well, Sensation. Well, whole my bunch story of is that one of the guys in the band for the show, just a regular, you know, band member, he came up, came over to me one day. He was like, yo, bro, I, I don't know about all these other jokers, but you are a star. And I never thought about that before. Like, and no one had ever said that to me. Wow. You know, um, a star. Man, get out of here. I ain't mm -hmm. no star. He was like, man, you got it. So after the show was over, we were there for six or seven months, mm -hmm. sleeping under the dressing room table. Mm -hmm. um, it was time to go on to the next thing. So I moved to New York. They had an extra bedroom. I became one of their roommates in, in, uh, in Washington Heights in Harlem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we started working on some music. Uh, we cut a demo, a song I'll never forget. I'll never forget. It's called Don't Hold Out. Mm -hmm. And we started shopping it. We had one song, and we had a photographer take some pictures, and we took it downtown and had it retouched mm -hmm. to make it look real right. good. Right, sure, sure. And then we started shopping it. And I had, uh, during that time, I had auditioned for Mama, I Want to Sing. Oh, okay. Which is the longest right, running right. Play, yeah. black off Broadway show in theater mm -hmm. history. And I auditioned 10 times. Uh, nine times I said no. And the tenth time, I didn't want to go. I was like, I ain't going. <laughs> My cousin was like, yeah. nah, cuz, we, we going. And I got in that time. But let me ask you something. So they audition people like, they say like, we have a month of audition before we start, and then you keep coming like that? How's it no, ten times? No, the, the show is running. Oh, so it's already running? The show is running, and, and had been running for a couple of years by okay. the time I got in. In fact, Desiree Coleman, who was the original lead, was no longer the lead. Deatra Hicks was, and she was phenomenal. Um, so they would hire new cast members, and they would watch the show. We'd watch the show for two weeks, and then we were in. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So they, they throw you in the deep end. Ooh. You get your uniforms, and you, play, you start out playing in the ensemble, in the right, choir. Right. And then as you become more secure with the part, then you, you know, grow to become one right. of the principal leads. And I did. And then someone, someone heard you, and, and that's why you started on backup work. Because you did backup first. No, that, this was a whole different entity. So um, I did a few odd, maybe one <laughs> weird job. I sold vibrating pillows door to door. That was you? 
That was me, bro. My mama told me about you. I was, I was cold. I was cold knocking on people's door, asking them if they wanted to buy a vibrating pillow. So you know, oh, right. in New York, that didn't work well. But I sold enough pillows because they paid us every day. I sold enough pillows to get me a bus ticket back to DC. Wow! I just and how many pillows is that? Do you need? That's four. <laughs> Only four. Oh, four pillows. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't four. that difficult. Okay, okay. Four pillows get you back to DC. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna remember that. <laughs> See what <laughs> had happened. Was. Right, right, right. Okay, right. So, okay. So you do, so you get into to, to so, singing. So uh, I I do all of that, and so now I, I'm I'm frustrated, and I, I want to go back home. And so my homie was like the guy that was like you're a star. He was like, no nah, man, we we going to the club tonight. I wasn't feeling good. So he took me to this club called the Danceteria in New York. Ah, which was, yeah, remember yeah, that spot? Yeah, yeah. I heard a lot about it. Okay. That was huge. That was huge. It was, it was very big. Yeah, yeah. And so we went, and there was a band playing there. And they were, they were really good. They had this goofy girl lead singer. And she was goofy. That's why I'm mm-hmm. saying goofy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, afterwards, after the show, the, the MD, the band leader came. Well, my friend brought him over, and he introduced him to me. He was like, what'd you think? I said, I think that y'all are missing one thing. Oh, I don't do that. That's cheesy. I did. That's he, cheesy. Well, me? I'm just saying, me. Yeah, I, did, yeah. I, I did that. So he was like, okay, well, here's your time to shine. But All the right. space was really crowded. It was packed. Okay. Elbow to elbow. So I started singing, and there was a gentleman who I didn't know was standing behind me. Um, turned around, and he's like, who are you? Who are you? I'm, I'm like, I was like 18, 19. Nice. I'm like, who are you? Uh-huh. <laughs> um, so uh, we talked for a minute. He gave me his card, and I held on to it. I didn't go to D.C. the next day. Held on to the card for about a week, maybe two weeks. Mm-hmm. And I called him like 11 o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. Don't know why I called him so late, but I called him at 11 o'clock at night. And he responded like, what took you so long? Like wow. He was waiting for me to call. Wow. And uh, I, was, I was in New Jersey at this point. And so he asked me to come to New York to go to uh, Unique Recording, which is on 47th and 7th Avenue at the time. Mm-hmm. So I'd take the bus down to the path over to New York, the subway up to 47th Street. Almost got mugged on the way to makes the sense. studio. Yeah, makes sense. And uh, I finally get up there, <laughs> and I meet my homie there, Daryl, was his, is his name. And we get up there, and he has Parliament Funkadelic in the studio. Mm. Now, I grew up being a huge A lot Parliament of them, yeah, yeah, sure. Fan. I mean, sure. like, for real, for mm-hmm. real huge. I had all their records. So I was blown away because I saw faces that I recognized, mm-hmm. and uh, and they were high, they was messed up, <laughs> they mm-hmm. was they was told back they probably been up for three or four days, and uh, they were but they still sounded great, they still sounded great. They were making uh, making this record, and my friend Daryl was like, "If you put my boy in the booth, you'll follow all that niggas." <laughs> and I'm Stakes saying, was high. I'm saying, bruh, stop, like cut it out. Right. But Ted Currier, who was the guy who gave me a card, was curious. So mm-hmm. he puts me in the booth. He puts me in the booth, and they start giving me things to do, and I was nailing it. Nice. I was nailing it, and he did fire those guys. Mm-hmm. He they did. Your boy's and, right. And that was the that project was a follow up project for the Boogie Boys, who had a Fly Girl. Up. That's right. Fly Girl. That's right. It you was, was on. You worked on that song. It was the a follow up album from that. Oh, oh okay. I, I know that was a rap. Oh, yeah. That was a rap record. Yeah, so yeah. that the second album was on Capitol Records because I was signed to Capitol Records. Um, was like one of the first rap R and B records. So it had these R and B hooks on it. And I sang the record didn't work. The boys got dropped from the label. <laughs> Damn. Um, I got signed to the label, and the guy that signed me uh, left. This is how I got signed. I was, in the, I was working on the record. He had fired uh, Parliament guys, and I'm working on the record. And his wife comes into the studio and says, come and sing. She sounded like Michelle. She had this little oh, fancy wow. voice. Okay. Come and sing for these people in this room. And I did. I didn't know who they were. I was, had been singing for a couple of mm-hmm. hours. I wasn't nervous. Um, I go in there, and I sing. I think I sang Ribbon in the Sky, if I, if I remember. And... I left that room with a seven album deal. Nice. I didn't know who they were. I didn't know that they were upper management for black music at at Capitol Records. Seven album. Seven album deal. And it took it took a minute for that to register, like what that meant. You Mm -hmm. know, like that was really a big deal. Because I wasn't like I wasn't pounding the pavement Mm -hmm. for that. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. I wasn't chasing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so there was. But then the guy who was responsible for me at the label got fired. Probably soon after I was So I didn't belong to right, I right. didn't belong to anybody. Right, right. And then the next guy who filled his position was more interested in signing 
his acts to the label than so, dealing with me or another act that was already signed. So. What, what, what's, inter what's interesting to me is I didn't really discover you until Lovey Dovey. You know what I'm saying? That was the second single. Right, right, second, right, right, right. I know you had one before that, but that was the one I, I discovered. Um, and there was a time where, like, it kind of music, what was it, was it, was it um, like, not really live? It sounded like, like, when it computerized? Yeah, like, it a lot was. Of that kind of, was yeah. yeah, it kind of sounded like that. A lot, of, some, a lot of songs sounded similar. Let me ask you a question. Did they, because I, I think it was that video, uh, Lovey Dovey. There was, was no Lovey Dovey video. What, which one no, you was dancing around looking like Michael, George Michael? <laughs> the little, in the, George in, Michael was looking like me, bro. Oh, well, I don't know. I, 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 I did that I don't joke know who first. Who was looking like who? Huh? <laughs> uh, did no. you, did, what, what song was that? That, wasn't, that, that was one? She's Fly. Oh, that was She's Fly. Okay, that was the okay, first okay. single, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, look at him looking like But look, I didn't, know, I didn't know how to dance. I just... True. <laughs> we saw it. I was like... I, I didn't know how to they dance. They didn't do enough cutaways, Look, man. check this out. I still don't know how to dance. Oh, really? Like, well, you're older now. It don't matter. You can just do a two-step. Two-step. Right that's up. all I need. Yeah, I mean, I remember... Working out. Um, and your career moved kind of fast. I mean, you know, for somebody to come out with a, with a record, with, I felt like, you know, you started having hits right, right, right pretty early on. Yeah, I mean, I was... Uh, that, uh, so... Epic Records bought my contract from Capitol mm -hmm. at the end of the day. And I was signed to, to Epic with Michael Jackson and Luther Vandross. Mm -hmm. and, and, and me, like nobody knew who I was. Right. So I, I had to make a mark. And so my first album, if you listen to it, is all over the place. It's okay. not R&B, it's right, not right. It's pop, it's bubblegum mm -hmm. pop, it's this, mm -hmm. it's that. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure what kind of record I was going to, what kind of artist I was going to be. Right. I was still figuring myself out. Right. And the second album was more focused. Right. Um, then She's Fly stuck, Lovey Dovey stuck, right, right. Young Love stuck, right. Forever Yours stuck. We right. have five singles off that album. Right. They don't even do that anymore. No more, right. You know? Right. But, but let me ask you one thing. I, I always want to know behind the scenes of this. Do they like, do they try to make you into somebody they want you to be that's not even who you are? Like say, why don't you wear this jacket? Why don't you dance like this? Why don't you do it like, because this is hot right now. You're like, I, that's not really me. But you go along with it because there's a lot of people in that room telling you what the hell to do. Am well, I correct or no? When I showed up to, to shoot the video for She's Fly, I didn't know we were going to shoot the video. Okay. And I had on the motorcycle jacket and the jeans and the shades. So we did that. And then they wanted me to keep wearing that, you know, for branding. Yeah, right, so my right. album cover has the same right, look on right, it. Right, sure. And everywhere I went, they wanted me to do that look, the right. motorcycle jacket, right. um, the high top fade. Right. And uh, I had to stick with that for five, six years. You say you had to stick with it because you, you didn't want to be confrontational and say, I don't want that? or you felt No, but I understood. Either? I understood oh. because it was like, you know, I would, it would make me easily identifiable. I had, you know, I had found that right hair color. Right, right, red. right. The red. Yeah. The red number six. <laughs> that was the whole yeah, yeah, color. Burnt, burnt arm Because see, shit. when I started that, you know, <laughs> then I had to keep doing it. Right. And then they stopped making the color. Then I, I had to. Damn. Yeah. Damn, damn. You're like, shit, you should, you should load up on that <laughs> shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. But then the, but then the big one came out, you know, with yeah. you. Yeah, and, and then to this was, day, was complete with so much pushback, you would not even believe it. Because I think it was, it wasn't, they didn't want it on the album, if I'm not mistaken. No, it was on the was? album, but they didn't want it to be the single, and I had chosen it to be the single. And it, I don't know why it was such a big deal. It was a it's huge. A hell of a song. I, so it was a huge it. deal at the label. Like the the president of the label was he white? Called, yes. Oh, called me in for a meeting. He was like, Tone, uh, uh, we, we, you know, we think only Stevie Wonder could get away with a song like this. Wow. Okay. And they tried to talk me into choosing another song that they had going with the song that they had chosen, and I I just would not hear it. I kept saying, with you, nope, with you, with you. So they released it, because, you know, back in the day, they were servicing radio with vinyl. Okay. So they released it with a plain label, a blank no, no label. Picture, no, with hand, no picture, no roll, no right. pre-roll. They just serviced radio with this, you know, so Epic's uh, promotions manager probably had 10 records to service that week. And then Capitol has records, and then this label has records, and there's only maybe four slots available right. on the station that week. So... My record shows up on this pile of records that has no information on it. Now, to me, that would have made the record stand out and make me more curious as to what it was, which is what happened. People started playing it, and it just began to happen on its own. And then Anita Baker called me, um, and even how that happened you was... You have a video for it, right? They no. Didn't, they didn't trust. They didn't there not, was, no push, no help no, at all. No, there wasn't going to be a video. And so one day I was walking, I walked into our office, and our receptionist had stepped away, don't know where she was, but the phone was ringing and had been ringing. And I just picked it up, and it was Anita Baker. No, come on now. I, that's, that was exactly my reaction. I'm about to turn all this off. That's Man, exactly bullshit. my reaction. I was like, nah, this cannot be. And she just went on to say that she had 
heard my song. She saw me perform on the Party Machine that used to come on after Arsenio. Okay. You, no, that no, went no, over. No. You? Yeah, yeah, I'll sleep. Yeah, you're 78, right? Yeah, yeah. thank you. Okay, okay. okay. all right. Yeah, well. okay. Yeah, I ain't mad at you, brother. I look at you, though, so you got me in this one. All right. I'm going to get away with it. This, that's the last one you're getting away with. Go ahead, Mr. Mr. Come Chair. on, youngin. Now, you know okay. Okay. Doctor, okay. doctor. Oh, we're going to get to that. <laughs> we're all kind of tools. Right <laughs> this, house, this, house, this whole house empty right now. There's shit all up on here, man. Uh, nothing on this wall. Uh, TV. But go ahead. So, so, uh, Anita uh, Baker answered the phone. She, she answers the phone. The phone. Well, she well, she well, tells me that she loves the song. She's on uh, Electra at, at the time. Uh -huh. And I told her that the label didn't think it was a hit record. And she was like, man, those people are crazy. And she said, I'm going to send you $50,000, which I didn't believe. I didn't even believe I was talking to Anita Baker. Uh -huh. Um, but she sent the check. It came certified. And wow. she, she called Blair Underwood, who was her friend. Yes. Um, and he directed it. It was directed his directorial it. debut. And, he was um, in the video, too. Little cameo. He, yeah, I, I he, he shooted him away. Right? Yeah, 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 I thought I saw him. I saw the video. She was captivated. Right, right. Un understood. Light skin, light skin, old dark skin at the time. Yeah, I get um, you. <laughs> but, you know, interestingly. But, but let me ask you real quick. So the record was going, doing well. And they still didn't want to get behind it, or the, that's like, it was beginning. It was growing bubbling. legs. It was bubbling. Okay. Yeah, it was okay. growing okay, legs. Great. But then, and we had shot like a homemade video for it because it was right. like they're not gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Right. And the technology was not as advanced as it is now. Right. Sure. And it looked like it. Right. Uh, but she gave us the money to do the. And I asked her why. I asked her how how was I supposed to pay her back? Because you know I was just starting out. Right. And I had no money. Right. And uh, she said just. Be the star that you are. Nice. That's how you pay me back. Nice. I was like, wow. Maybe one day we'll sing together. She was yeah. like, whoa. Easy, bro. Okay. <laughs> you, you just picked the phone about love. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> nice. Oh, um, so we went out to LA and shot the video, and then it exploded. It yeah. exploded, and then the label took all the credit. Ain't anybody. So like, they, that's we, what they do. We that's knew do. we had a brilliant but, but, artist with a brilliant record. Uh, of course, like, of course. But that song is so easy to see to hit. I mean, I, I don't even see how you can say. Eh, eh, when fuck? I first heard it, when I heard the song the very first time, a friend of mine, a close friend of mine, Raymond Reader, wrote it, and he was playing me some songs, and he played with you, and it got to the first. It's for real what mm -hmm. I feel, and mm -hmm. I stopped and I said, "Okay, man, when are we gonna do it?" Like. I didn't even know the song. Right. I, I hadn't even listened to the whole thing yet. I just knew it was it. And then it turns out that he, I asked him, how, why did he write the song? Mm -hmm. And he said, he, he said, you know Vivian? And I said, yeah, I know Vivian because in my mind at that time, Vivian was my girlfriend. Just mentally in your mind? Yeah, in my mind. Oh, oh well, okay. Yeah, well, she went to school with us. Okay. She was beautiful. She okay. still is. Okay. He wrote it about her. So I had a little attitude. Oh. How you going to write a song about my girl right, in my right, mind? Right, right, right. All in your head. <laughs> now that song, that took you over the top. Yeah. So you started touring with people and touring your own with or your. Actually, your own I I toured with uh, Gladys Knight before with you came out. Um, oh, uh, okay. With one, she's fly and okay. on the first album, okay. and her her crew was trying to sabotage me so bad. Patty LaBelle's in? No, uh, Gladys Knight. Oh, gotta be Gladys Knight. Well, I can see. Yeah, yeah. Louis. But hold on, does she have does she have control of who goes on the show with her? I think she might have. So how would you, how so I bring somebody on the show and then be like uh, you she wasn't too aware much. of what was going on it was oh, her crew like okay uh, like my my band got we played in New York at the Apollo my band got sick uh, everybody ate except me so everybody got food poisoning except me okay and so I had to do the show as a track date right and and it was at the Apollo sold out the press was there the the track starts and then it stops and then reverses like three or four times. And I stopped the track. I just said, stop the music. And I had the audience clap. And, right. You know, and I sang the song, I sang the song a cappella. Wow. And got a standing ovation. Wow. Yeah, yeah I can see that. You know, you know rule number 46 or 32, never outshine your master? Never outshine. Number one? That's number one? Yeah, that's okay, number one. Yeah. Oh, my bad. One. I don't pay attention to it. It's yeah. in the 40s for me. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you think it's bad? I'll shine my... Yeah. Well, but, you know, you'd be surprised. And I've worked. We've, we've toured. We've done stuff. How fragile some big stars' egos are. Yeah. You're like, what? You're like, way bigger than me. Why would you act like that towards me? I've had some en encounters with some stars like that. I can imagine. You tour, you, you tour with some probably. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what a bitch. Yeah. you be like, hold on, we in this together. Surprising. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it, it can be disappointing looking up to somebody and then they, you know. I had one tell me by, through the producers, this is not a Tony Terry concert. You will tone your performance down. 
I think I know who that was. <laughs> I was like, Why did RF do that to you? Uh -huh. Who? RF do that to you. No, no, no. It was, a, it it was not RF. I'm trying, think, I'm trying to think of who else it was. It was PB. I can see that. Yeah, hell yeah. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah, it ain't but one Peebo Bryson. <laughs> PB, one peanut butter and jelly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I mean. You know. but, but, but yeah, we I, were doing I, the whiz. Right, we right. were doing the whiz, right? He was the whiz. He was the tin man. I was the tin man. And uh, the, the music director had written an arrangement of the Tin Man song okay. that was amazing. Okay. And, you know, it was, I think it was really the arrangement of the song, but every night it got this extended yeah. standing ovation. Yeah. Yeah. But he was supposed to have a line that came right after I finished and he'd have to wait. And that frustrated him. Ooh, he, he, was yeah. like, he, yeah. he, didn't, he was like, you can't be getting no applause like yeah. that. He yeah. actually said that. And on top of the fact that, <laughs> I can't. Well, no, I, on top of the fact that he had he he stood on a milk crate, I can see that. so that I would not be taller than him. I, know that makes, I see that all the time. <laughs> so, so trust me, I went to see the Wiz, the black, the, the Wiz, uh, just recently in, in, in D.C. Is it the same? Is it the same the same hope, one you think? Probably, yeah. Because the Tim Man killed I, it in that too. What, what did people play? The Wiz. Lion? Oh, he was the Wiz. Yeah. Oh. Grace Jones was Eveline. It's the same one then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What do I you mean it was the same one? Grace Jones was in the play? No, no, no. I'm saying it's, it's the same. It's the same black whiz. I mean, oh yeah, yeah. The whiz like, is yeah. the whiz. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I know. I don't know unless it's the whiz. Unless, years or something, they unless it's the like song. the whiz goes to Harlem or something. Right, like right. That. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, what I did like about the whiz was they, they injected a lot of local colloquialism and things that are oh, happening yeah, yeah. now and stuff. Yeah. That was kind of cool. But I can see you as the Tin Man. That Tin Man murdered it. And um, yeah, I can see him as the uh, what's the name? But Peebo, come on, Peebo, come on, Peebo. young brother. I'm still a huge fan. Of course, of course uh, you are. You can still got love for him. You just, absolutely. You, you just surprised. I was. I was I've like, people. Yeah. I make him that insecure. I couldn't believe it. I've done stand-up comedy and shows in front of people, and they're like, and, you know, I have 30 minutes, and 25 minutes, right, and right. 20 minutes, and then, nigga, just, just say hello and just goodbye. Just right. Like, you, know, like, I, I, you know, they won't say it, but I, but, I, but, I, but I get it, though, man. I can just imagine touring with people, man, at that time. I've been in you situations know, where, like, you know, they're like, well, which one of y'all going to go last? Because whoever goes last is, quote, unquote, the, the headliner. headliner. Right. I'm like, I don't care. Right. Put me on first. You a bad. Yeah, well, no, yeah. You're yeah. gonna have to go to work yeah, when yeah. I come off, though. I'm gonna tell you what. When I was listening to some of your songs, you can sing. Thank you, bro. No, I'm being dead ass. You know, you can sing like some church singing and stuff. I was like, what? No, you, you. I, the, I got the, that the from levels church. And stuff? I got that from church. And you wow. Know, I come from singing. I come from a singing family. As well. do, do you think people people overlooked you a little because you light skin, handsome, the dance, poppy and shit? That they didn't think you could really sing, sing? Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, because you came up during a. Christopher, Christopher Wayne, I'll be sure. I mean, you know, around that time, you know, Elder Bar, shout out to Elder, he can really sing too, but the rest of them. But you know what I'm saying? You came up during that time, it was light skin battle. Y'all had to fight for that. Yeah, for I didn't battle. Front, I was never in the competition. Front girl, girl in the front row. I was never in competition with anyone. Oh, because, man, you just you know, and I'm telling man, you, because, on, like, because of my training, you know, like, uh, I was taught to leave everything you have on the stage. Okay. So, you know, once you do that, Mm, 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 what mm, you gonna mm, do? Have you ever been moved from the front to the headliner show? Yeah. Damn. From the back to the headliner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, call yeah. <laughs> the, the, the opener. From the to, ensemble to the lead. Right, right, right. Yeah. I'm, talking about, I'm talking on a show, like a, like a, a four, like, you know, you go out with a couple, you've gone out with a couple people, different yeah. artists are kind of the same, that they kind of be like, well, you know. You mean I'm like, gonna, wait a minute, like I'm headlining and well, then I'm headlining. It's like you, Elder, Bob, whoever the people were, like four or five of them, let's move, right. this, let's move this around a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've, that's happened. And then people like, and then people that you moved around to, do you think it's like it's, like it's your fault? You know, I've had it happen to me. People put me in the end of the show, and they're like, other comics now, like, oh. Oh, no, like, they usually, me. you know, it's not, who, who goes first and who goes last is the promoter's decision. Mm -hmm. It's usually That's not what I'm left saying. up to the artist. That's what but I'm if left up to the artist, I don't care where I come in the lineup. I, no, I know gonna, you don't, I'm but if you're do smoking the show too much in the beginning, of one of the first two acts and the last two acts ain't doing it, I may have to, um, you know, move it around a little bit. Yeah. Say, no, no disrespect, you know. Church but, finger, yeah, just yeah, pause yeah, up. There just you go. Tip wow. Out. wow, wow, <laughs> wow. So you toured with, um, you, we talking about RF. You did Roberta Flack. Roberta Flack yeah, yeah. for that, ten years. Yeah. That's huge. That's it big, was that's huge. A big, that's a big. That's a big. Big. You know. It was big person. Yeah, we traveled around the world, and I sang the duets with her. Right. Um, you know, people are blessed. Right, right, right. No, Maybe no, that's no. why he ain't like me in the way. Yeah, no, I could, I could no this, this was after that. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. That. okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all went all over the world. Though. We did. Yeah, we and did. For dignitaries, didn't y'all do that kind of stuff? Kings, Kings and stuff. Yeah, heads of state, sheiks. 
I mean, we would oh, no, do Negro command from, perform. No, Negro yeah. from Palmer Park. Yeah, man. That. She would, it would, it would be because of Roberta Flack, you know, she was, and she still is, she's still with us. Yeah, she, yeah. She's an icon. I mean, yeah, like a for wow. real, for real icon. That's, that, that, that's she doesn't that's sing like Aretha Franklin. She doesn't sing like Shaka Khan. She sings like Roberta Flack. And, and her uniqueness sets her apart from everyone right. and just, that's her. She has her own lane. Closer to you. Closer. Closer. I get to you. Yeah, that. Yeah. And she did one with Donny Hathaway. Many. Many with Donny Hathaway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She yeah. had a hell of a voice. Yeah, yeah. hell of a voice. Yeah, yeah. I've seen some people. Would you do this? I've seen seen some artists who got older and didn't have the voice that they used to have, and they're still trying to be out here. Would you ever say no to the stage if you know you? Didn't feel well, like you if if I get older and can't sing, then I'm going to lower the songs. I'm going to lower the keys of my songs. So I still can sing them. Well, you get that bread. You get that yeah, bread. Man, yeah, yeah. Until the, the wheels bread. fall off. I know that's right. Absolutely. Oh my. <laughs> I love it. No, I, I love it. Yeah. You, so, so what is your vocal range? What is your real range? I'm a. I'm what's known as a lyric baritone. I heard that before. Um, lyric baritone. So I'm a baritone, really. But a lyric baritone is the voice between var baritone and tenor. So I can sing some tenor notes, in but I got to come on down back to where I'm comfortable, right, really. Right, right. Um, earlier on, all of my songs were really high. They, my, my producers did that intentionally because they liked the tension in my voice singing high mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But I was bucking the whole time, you know, because right. I didn't sing that high. Oh, Not naturally. I, okay, I had okay. to learn the songs. Well, after I recorded with you, so the process was I sang it down maybe 10 times, right? Okay. And then they comp the lead. So they would take all, they would cherry pick right. each performance and take the best parts and put them down on one track and then mm. create the lead. And then I have to learn that. Wow. Doing separately and then having, and then taking chunks out and then you got to learn where it goes like this at. Is that what yeah. you're telling me? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. they would put, so wow. you, you have 10 tracks. So the, on the 11th track, you play, you take a, a, a piece from track one, put it on 11. A piece from track seven, next line, put it on 11 piece from track five, right, put it on right, eleven, right, you know, right, and, right. and so make, on and so forth. And then so at the end of it you have you have one cohesive, consistent lead that mm. you can't tell. Right. The average listener cannot tell that it's compiled from right. several leads. But mo a lot of performers do that. Most. Okay. Let me ask you this, and this has happened to me, and I, and I, and I that's what I really want to talk to you also is uh first I didn't know you wanted input put, put that Emmy up. Yeah, oh wait, 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 wait I'm sorry. Let me get that. Yeah, my bad. I see all this shit on the table. Yeah, what is it? I thought it was furniture. Yeah. Come on, man. Come on. Like not, it's sparkling like that. Look at this. What that Emmy my, from? My first Emmy that I, I won this year is what? So I'm like on an Emmy tour. No, I Emmy is on no, tour. I'm, like I'm just that. with her. I like that. I'm just with her. You know, um I worked on a, I was asked to work on a record called um People Get Ready. Okay. And if I'm being honest, I didn't really care for the song. Okay. So I procrastinated. I was like, you know, I did. I worked on every other thing, and then finally I was like, okay, well, let me just work on this record. What that mean? Someone brought it to you and it said, asked me to do, it? asked me to do an arrangement. Oh, okay. A vocal ahead. arrangement. Okay, go ahead. Right. And uh, and so I did, you know, and I kind of felt like I was half-hearted, really? right? I just mm -hmm. I didn't give it everything I had. And then really, I didn't love the song. Right. It was okay. No, I didn't I love it. it. So, it. and I turned it in, and um, it was with, um, oh my gosh, you're going to kill me. Well, when I turned it in, they liked it. Okay. Uh, um, and the next thing I know, I'm being told we're being nominated, which I thought, oh, that's cool. What was it for, though? Well, so we, we ended up doing a commercial for, the song's called People Get Ready. Right. And so. we did a commercial for, and gave all the proceeds to St. Jude. Uh, children's okay. Hospital, okay. Okay. cancer research, and I think the commercial and the you know combination. And we got celebrities. We got Stevie Wonder to join the project, and Taylor Dane. And, wow. Okay. She can say uh, Ray Parker Jr., oh, okay. Allison Williams, a whole host of singers from around the world. You know, sing a line or two in the record, and um, we called it Legends Unite okay. for St. Jude. Okay. And when they said I was working, I wouldn't. I didn't even go to the Emmys. I didn't even think we had a right. snowball's right. chance. I was working that weekend, and uh, we came back, and they said we won, and I thought, that's dope. That's great. That but then the, the trophy came. I was like, wow. I probably stood there for a good 30 minutes just looking at it and saying thank you because my mother would say to me, you're going to get yours soon. But she left before she saw it. Oh, but I tell you, that reminds us, that's, that's reverse karma. Remember the white folks that said, with you, we took all the credit? 
Oh, yeah. Same thing with this shit. You didn't give a damn about that song. Now you want to bring the shit all on stage. Right, right. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, you didn't say that oh, first. See, oh, you trying to come for me. You. No, see, see what had happened now you was. Got all the love for it I didn't shit. know she was uh-huh. just pretty. Oh, that's what it was. I didn't. Well, they didn't know it was going to be such a big hit with you, the white folks. That, that no, they did not. <laughs> Same thing right now. Uh, but nah, real talk, nah, real nah, talk. Nah, real talk. Now you got some more stuff. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and so, this brother bringing all kinds of stuff. Yeah, come on, man. Come Listen, on. I'm proud of I'm proud of it. As well um, you should um, be. You know, so I'm having this conversation with this brother and, uh, you know, a really thoughtful conversation. And, and we get into um, health care and mm-hmm. mental health. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We start talking about um, men and mental health and, you know, physical health and spiritual health and, it turns out the brother is the vice president of the university, and I didn't know that. Right, right. <laughs> and then I get a phone call that I'm I'm being honored with um, the uh, uh, doctorate of philosophy and musical arts, and it, I didn't I didn't even realize it was such a big deal. I mm-hmm. didn't. Mm-hmm. But I went and got my cap cap and gown, doctoral doctoral mm-hmm. gown, and. And went down there, and Melba Moore was getting one, mm. and Muhammad Ali Jr. was getting one, and Carl Payne was getting one. And oh, that's not like Oprah Winfrey yeah. giving out shit. You get one. You, you get right, one. Where you, was I at? Where right. was I at? Uh, no, but, but, but <laughs> come on, yeah, dude, come on, come on, man. I mean, let me check my seat. Let me know, they, they, let me I, I, I guess they have a. I guess they have criteria. I mean, oh, you know, snap. I've been in the business for forty years. Of course, you got you. Yeah, and so you know, my my life's experiences you know, have afforded me, to, you know, worthy. Right, sure. No, I get that. And I was going to get into that. So it's like, so your career is up here, and then all of a sudden, see, well, not all of a sudden, but something like, I feel like between like 96 to 2000, we're toning it. We're toning it. Tony over here? Yeah, that might, well, 96 here? is when we first went out on the uh, Wiz tour. Okay, and okay. Then, but between then, I had signed an independent deal with uh, Golden Boy Records. You remember a group called R- RJ's Latest Arrival? Yeah, yeah, I do. Shackles on my feet. Right, right, right. That they were signed to that label. Okay. Uh, I think that was the only hit he ever had. Right. Golden Boy Records, and then he signed me, and but it was right at the time when radio was transitioning from you know because at one time artists like myself and um, Freddie Jackson, Luther, and Peebo Bryson yeah. were core artists at radio, sure. but it started to shift then, and so we weren't hearing those artists anymore as much as we, and then rap started to take over, mm-hmm. and there was no place for us, right, and rap right, right, began right. to dominate, and it was said that R&B was dead, but it never, it never died, because right, right. I never stopped working. But you know, one of my favorite times of R&B music to me was the 70s. I'm just going to say, 70s yeah, soul. Yeah. I just felt like the Temptations and yeah. all, all them. So That's the stuff I grew up on. Yeah. Right. But I feel like it became more like electronic and, and a little more danceable. Like even now, again, I don't know all R&B people, but I think the people who are doing most successfully are not really R&B artists. They're more poppy. Right. Chris Brown's not really R&B. Say no, one, right. but, or Beyonce. It's not really the, the, the R&B I grew up with. You know, right, you know right. as a kid. It's not soul music. So, there you go, soul. So it's rhythm and blues, but it's not soul. So, so what, what, who, who controls that? The record companies? Every, okay, you know, every generation has their own music. Okay. You know, what we, listen, what we listened to, our parents thought was wild. What they listened to, their parents thought was wild. What our kids listen to is crazy to right, me. Sure. And, uh, you know when there was the, there were the days of conscientious rap. Yep, sure. You know the KRS ones, yep, 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 and, and, and you know the, everybody who's speaking about uplifting our people, they're gone. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You don't hear them anymore. Anymore. Yeah. Then it was decided by corporate, probably oh. somebody in Iowa in yep, the middle yep, of a cornfield, yeah, yeah. that that mumble rap was going to be the right. rap of the day. Mm-hmm. And you know that kind of thing is decided. It's not just, it just doesn't happen. Right, sure, that's what I'm saying. It's decided right. because they want to keep our people dumb. Mm-hmm. We can't be too smart, mm-hmm. can't give them too much information. Sure. And KRS and, and Tupac was giving us too much information. information. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but when, that, when that time comes when you don't have the hits anymore, is there a really low point of your life? Do you feel like, because as a comic, I'm going to tell you, there was times that, you know, when I left Hollywood, I was tired of it. I couldn't take it no more, you know. Just well, Hollywood yeses. would do that to you. Oh, yeah, you will. I, well, I'm not record, a Hollywood the record, person. The record company doesn't, the record industry won't do that to you either? Well, it will. It, it, it can, except there is a world that's bigger than the United States. Okay. So well, the United well, States yeah, yeah. is fickle, but yeah. you know other countries are way more loyal to the brand uh, and to the why music. Tina Turner and them, they go, they, they leave and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you, so you you start touring internationally and um, right taking advantage of those markets. And, and let me ask you, just uh, from a mental aspect and from a, a young artist out there, 
Let's say this. You, know, you don't feel a little bit failure if you're not making it here and you have to go overseas and do it that. Like it's not really happening here no more. Because when, when you're I, here and you're hot. When I slide my credit card and it goes through. Oh, there it is, man. I, I mean, boy, I tell you, I don't know who your teacher was. But <laughs> you say, I don't care what's going on. What, 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 what's happening right now? <laughs> right yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I, but yeah. I just feel like, so, so you never hit rock bottom. You never, it's always been pretty cool for you. Not you always, rock bottom, rock. and I don't want to hit rock bottom. No, I, I get Some that. Some people have to have that. Yeah. You know, I've always had. Um, my family, and I come from a very, very spiritual family, Good. church going. I mean, I'm talking about uh, in North Carolina in the summertime, we were at church literally seven days a week. Nice. And then I, when I grew up, I was like, I have been to church enough. So right. I'm going to chill. Right. 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 <laughs> doesn't mean I'm not spiritual. doesn't right. mean I don't love God. Right. But I kind of backed off from going to church. But then I started missing the fellowship of it all and okay. started going back. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and does something like that help you get through the dark times, like going to church? Because I'm not really a church goer. My family, I, you know, there have been dark times. Right. And yeah, those yeah. are the times that, um, you know, you plug into your family. Okay, okay. And, you're lucky and, to have a, and you're lucky to have a family that I you have. I was. Because some, people, some artists don't. And you, I was. Yeah, and, and I yeah. don't take it for granted. And go. I recognize that I had something that a lot of people didn't and don't have. Nice, nice. Yeah. Because, you know, I used to dislike... Well, this has changed now. Not just like, but it felt weird when people say, man, I used to like you. I used to watch you, man. Whatever happened to you? Or my what mama used to like, man, my mama used to like you, man. Right, right, right. Well, she oh. don't anymore. Exactly. Like, like, uh -oh. I'm, well, <laughs> I ain't seen in a while. What happened to you? Yeah. I feel like you know, you're walking down the street, you got to answer those questions. And it's like sometimes that would bother me to the point like, oh, yeah, what's happening? You know, what's happening? I had to get to me. But I got to the point where I'm going to tell you, I never, really know, never told anybody this, but I got to the point where I, I think they hit rock bottom. But I remember one time I put a check in for $500, and the lady gave me a, that name, what do you call it, the, the, the slip back, whatever, the, the deposit, whatever, slip back, and it's $237. I said, no, I thought you thought I put $237. I said, I put $500 in. Nigga, you was down $270. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, shit. I thought, <laughs> I, had some, I thought I had a couple grand in the bank. Yeah, I was like, right. what? And I had to get on my hustle real quick. You know, I had to really get on my hustle. But I told myself, no, man, P, you, you better than this. You bigger than this, man. You, you are a great talent. And I just had to grind. There was times, you know, I'm there. There was a time I got on a mega bus, and I was famous. I had my hoodie. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was a bit like this man like in the corner, going, going from you know, you know Atlanta to, to New York, and she like this, around, and, you know, people seeing the thing, they see me, and shit. I like a, I like one of them, uh, what them Chinese dudes that wear wrapped all ninja. I was a ninja <laughs> in the corner and shit. I want to be like, hey man, you, you, in a, you uh, was in Bath. What you doing on the right, bus? Right. Man, with that bullshit. I gotta right. get, to, I gotta get to New York, man. Well, it never got to mega bus for oh, me. Oh, lucky you, brother. Look, Trump shuttle. Oh, Trump shuttle though. I, Trump I shuttle. Get him out of here, man. Why? I used to take Trump shuttle from New York to DC, man. Right, right. right. I can't believe it. Right, right, right. But no, that's good that you came out of it. You know, unscathed. Look like you unscathed and stuff. Um, man, I'm scathed. Yeah, a little scared. I'm scared. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 we can really talk about it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to charge $200 you know, an hour. Right, right, you know, you, know, you go through yeah. some things. Come on, man. I mean, yeah. there's not one of us that has sure, not sure. You know, been through some things. There's not one of us right. that don't have some kind of mental issue. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. But, but what needs to happen is that we need to start. You know, when, I, when we're children, mm -hmm. it's our parents' responsibility to take care of us in every way. Okay. Right? Um, but when we become adults, it becomes our responsibility. And the things that you don't have that you need, okay. you have to, you're responsible for making sure of that. I, was just, I used to always say every black person should be, the government should give us one month, I mean, one, um, you know, what do you call it, therapist per month. From what okay, we've that, been that, through, that might be, that might be. Come on, fair. man, as a black person, you know, how, you know, you say mental health is for all of us, but talk to me that, about that, black. That's a degree of reparations. That, that's yeah, a, without a doubt. You know, I would take it. Right. I would take it. Yeah, I, th I think we do, man, because a, a daily life of a black man or a black person looking over your shoulder, cops pull up close to you, you're going to stores, it's just all of it. Worrying about your job, if you're going to get laid off or whatever. I think it has a lot. Yeah, America owes that to us. Well, why would I be worried about if I'm going to get laid off? If because I'm killing, if I'm killing the game. You, you, don't, think, you don't think they sometimes? I mean, I know, I know the, the people, people do. Right, that's I, why I you should worry about do. it. Not worry about it, but you know, sometimes you, know, you know, think, I know man, the people see. worry about, like, you know, uh, you, I've, I've, I've never had to have a job once I start, once I took music on full time. Mm -hmm. It's been music my whole life. What a blessing. Yeah, what a blessing. Yes. I don't take it for granted. Not to say it was all gravy, because mm -hmm. there has been some struggle. But whenever I needed what I needed, mm -hmm. they say your gifts will make a way. 
And that is true. And I'm glad um, getting this uh, uh, this degree. Are, are you able to use this? As Absolutely. A, and I'm going to. I'm, I'm changing my, my tags on the car. I'm changing my driver's license. Ooh. Everything going to have doctor in front of it. Right, right. Yes, sir. Dr. Terry. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> Call him Dr. Terry. Call him Dr. Terry. <laughs> I'm going to see Dr. Terry. Yeah. Dr. Yeah. Terry. Yeah. I like, yeah. Okay, okay. I like it too. Dr. Terry. Yeah, man. That's, that's some good stuff, man. Yeah. Brother, you know, you, you've, you've seen it all. You've been up, you've been down, you're back up again and stuff like that. I, I think it's great, man. I feel the same way. I feel a little kinship with you, man. When I, when I heard I could maybe get you to talk to you, man, I was so excited. Man. I was like, man, this brother been through. I remember it. I'm, I'm from the 80s, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know no, when light-skinned people were I, more in. Right, 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 right. Um, we're making a comeback right now. When, when I was asked to, uh, when my folks were telling me about this show, I hadn't seen it. Because what? I'm, this is why, though. My social media got hacked, man. Oh. And I've been off social media for two years. Can you believe it? No, I can't good. get my page back. So what? I've had to, I just started over. Who, who are you? Who, what's a professional the, hacker out of the country. A ring of hackers. Bottom. And, and uh, the, the person got a hold of my account because my manager, who's no longer my manager, okay. uh, gave me a number to someone who he said he vetted, and it turns out that he had not. You mean somebody who could work your social media for you? Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He, was, he was doing some sponsored ads on my page. But for some reason, I, maybe for some marijuana reason on that particular day, okay. I couldn't remember my password. Wow. I could yeah. not remember it. And, and uh, he, uh, he said, I could get him in. I could get him in. And he got me in, and then he locked me out. So, what, so, so when I so my new Instagram is I am Tony Terry one but the one that was hacked is I am Tony Terry. I'm going to play a real quick game with you. I wasn't going to do it, but I'm going to play with you. I, I, is it called Hoish or Broish? Hoish or Broish? Okay. This is for men over 25 years old. Okay. I'm going to say something, and you think if it's a little, a little hoish, the guy might not be, shouldn't be really doing it, or bro you understand it. Okay, you know? okay. You only got three seconds to answer. Oh, so damn. it's what you feel. You can't okay. think about it, right? When you hear it, you're like, ah, okay, no. Okay. All right. Ready? All right. Over 25 years old. Men getting facials. bro Okay, bro Okay. Uh, men wearing predominantly color pink. Broish. That's broish. Okay, okay, okay. Eating a pizza with a knife and fork. Hoish. Oh. Uh, <laughs> 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 okay, okay. This is gonna be the one for you. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. This, is, this is some light skin stuff here. And this is full body, every place, manscaping. I've never done that, and I'm not good. How is your brownish? How is your brownish? I'm stuck. Brohosh. 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 Okay, well, fuck it. We have to put that answer down. Brohosh. Super Alex Brohosh. Okay, I'm not. <laughs> I, 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 I never had that one. I, I, I had to look at my whole shit differently. Like, like bro, bro, okay. All right, letting a woman pay on the first date if she wants to take you out. On the first That's date. hoish. Uh, uh, she said, "I'm gonna take you out." Tony, oh no! I like oh no! You. If she says she wants to take, take me you, out, yeah, then yeah. absolutely, I would receive it. You would receive it. Okay. But if I invite her out, absolutely. No, no, of course, of course. Yeah. Whoever, do you, do you believe who asks should pay? I do. Uh, unless, right. unless you, you know. At the onset, say we're going Dutch. I'm going, okay. you, know, right. you, know, okay. you know, okay. Okay. We're going. I'm going with you to lunch. Right. I'm not taking you to lunch. You say that, okay? Because you, because you know, just how, just how I get women. Sometimes, because when women ask you, like, they'll, they'll say, "We should go get some dinner." Oh, we're going to get some eat. You know, I, you know, I, I hit them with it. I'm like, "Wow, that's what I'm talking about. I never had a young lady treat me like that. Treat me, like, and see what she say then." Right. Well, I, I would say, uh, uh, "Dutch lady." Okay, then Dutch. Oh no, that's okay. never happened to me. Oh, so Except you, I do have. You no, no, listen, I do have. I do have some some broke. Well, they're not even broke. That's right. what's really trippy about it. Right. So I have I, one of my friends. Like I I call him up. I say, Yo, what's good, man? What you doing? Okay, we're gonna get something to eat. Hey, you know I'm gonna ride with you. Right. Me up. All right, cool. Get in the car. He was like, well, So listen, uh, all I want is like two a two piece. Hey, uh, <laughs> wait a minute. All right, right, wait right, 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 right. <laughs> I was just riding. Weren't you already right, on your way right, to get right, something right, to eat? Yeah. So yeah, how is it that yeah, I'm yeah. paying for food and I gotta put gas in your car? <laughs> terrible, terrible. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, man. I'm, 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 well, we ain't, we ain't gonna be them kind of friends. I no, got you, man. bro. Um, <laughs> what, about, what about real quick, last two? Facetime your homeboy, your homie. Uh, I do that. 
No, listen, I do that, uh-huh. but it's usually it's not like a casual conversation. Uh-huh. No, it's usually okay, casual. It's, uh, of course, no, it's business, no, no, but no, casual. Hoarish, hoarish. I just want to see yeah, just no, 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 just, how you doing. I'm gonna see your face. You know, face. if I FaceTime you, you're only going to get audio. You're not going. My camera's right. not going to be on. I know that's right. I want to look at you. Okay, being a gentleman, mm-hmm. eating, I'm sitting down, <laughs> and a gentleman crosses his leg. You know, what are you talking? That, uh, yeah, yeah, that's not hoish. And not hoish. That's sophisticated. Oh, okay. If you don't, but you got you got to put that waist back. You can't have that waist Uh-oh. sitting out there like that. That nigga say he can't saunter. You, 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 you sidewinding, and you know that's a, a little bit of hoish. Oh, okay, I got. Okay, okay. I, I ain't fucking with you. I, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> you can't sidewind on okay, it. Okay, okay. You got to be straightforward okay. and confident and cross the leg. You know Both. what I mean? Okay, okay. Come on, man. Right, that, cool. that, that shit. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Damn. I ain't never do heard that. that one with sidewind. Don't sidewind. <laughs> side side. Don't sidewind. Don't, 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 don't throw the hip out there. Uh, 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 pull that hip back. I know you ain't got a big social media, media presence, Woo! but what we do sometimes, we do a thing called uh, IG creeping. So we go on your IG page okay. and we look at some stuff. So whatever we, you know, we, you know we, your page is very Y'all been creeping on my IG? Right, right. My, new, my new IG only have two pictures on it. I, I, okay, I think we might have found two pictures. So what I did, I'm going to ask you what you was thinking when you saw when you did this picture. What Uh-oh. is this? Okay, well, we're going to look at it. What was this right here? Oh, what, what was I this? was thinking, this my neck was itching. And is that what it was? Yeah, my you neck, scratched it? My neck was itching. All right, all right, all right. All right. I, I, and I, I didn't put, in, and, I, and you, I was thinking, where is my lotion? Because I didn't, I didn't, I, I, I can see it. I didn't well, touch them knees that day. I, well, yeah, that you don't need to cross your leg on. <laughs> all right, good. what was the next picture? What was it was seeing the next picture. Oh, damn, with the sweatsuit, with the Cavalier sweatsuit out of Landover, <laughs> Landover Mall. Let me see it, okay? <laughs> Landover yeah, Mall. Landover Remember Mall, when man. Landover Mall was the joint, Come man? On, like, man. I it was, that. but when they tore it down, it was so little. It yeah, just, yeah, what what man, happened? It shrunk. Uh, man. Well, we, we got bigger. I, I, Landover, I used Landover to love Mall. Landover, Landover Mall. Mall. Yeah. yeah, I was I was doing a, um, a drop. I don't know why there's just one pick from it, but I was doing a video drop for a concert. I guess sweatsuit. Sweatsuit. That's, sweatsuit, that's, sweatsuit, that's, sweatsuit, that's, sweatsuit, that's sweatsuit, my point. All right, let's see the next one. This is for what? Okay, okay, okay. See, huh? Wait, 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 wait. Okay. This picture right here? Yeah. Okay, so I was going to dinner one night, and I had a haircut appointment the next day. You know, you had left. That's my barber right there, but he abandoned me. He abandoned me. He did this? No, 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 no. I had a haircut appointment the next morning, but I figured I would just touch my line, you know, go ahead and have dinner. Mm -hmm. And while I was doing that, I gouged, like, I gouged it all the way to the scalp. To the scalp, scalp. And I had not been bald headed since I was five. Right. That that day. So I had to cut all my hair off and I literally actually when I gouged out the chunk, I stood there for about twenty minutes it's stuck. A, damn. Cause I knew all of it was gonna have to come off and I know that I have a funny looking Throw head. Throw a beanie on. Throw a beanie I, on. I, 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 I got days. a funny looking head and I can't wear hats. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right there, man. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, I, shit. Yeah. I, I was about to donate to you on that <laughs> Africa or something. Shit. All right, all right. We do a thing called spin the wheel. So when you spin it with all your might, all that DC oh, might, and wherever it land on, you got to participate in this right here. Oh, we all know it. Let's get, get, get a drum roll for him. Y'all let's get a drum roll for him. And put a real, put a real spin on that. Put a real spin on that. There you go. That, 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 yeah, come on, put a real spin and bye. Celeb crush call. Celebrity crush call. Okay, I'm gonna show you how we do. How we do. You have a cell phone? If you don't, I'll give you mine. Yeah. No, no, no. You got, you got one right there? Or no, I mean, it's in my bag. It's oh, don't worry. You can use mine. You can well, you won't get yours. Uh, uh, okay, no, no. I ain't got no I'll, I'll, I'll Okay, so here it is. As an actor, I want you as an actor, you have, think of a celebrity you may have a crush on. Okay. Pre- preferably a female one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, I don't know. Now you said my hips and shit. My hips all out of place and yeah. everything. <laughs> so, so what you do is you, 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 you grab the phone, act like you're making a call. They answer it. You say the name to the person like, hey, Salma Hayek or whatever, Halle Berry, how you doing? And you got a minute to maybe a minute and a half. To, I'm going to see how you could get her no, to come to your house. Uh, come on. How, how, you want to uh, see how what? How, how, how you could get her to come see your wife. Okay, let's just do that. Okay, uh, sure. Yeah. So I want to see your acting ability on a phone, how you go back and forth. So you call and you will use your wife. You're married. Yeah, you're an actor. In the yeah, movie, yeah, you're yeah, actor yeah, cut. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. acting here. Okay, no, I got you. Okay, so, so we go. We gotta hear what you would do in a movie. In a movie, you know. In, in a, a movie, role. right? In a role. If I it. if I was calling my wife Ronnie, right? Okay. And, and I'd say, okay, hold on, hold on, quiet on the set, y'all. I'm gonna say, and uh, let me say action. I'm the director. Okay, wait, wait. Let me hear, let me hear. You got it together. You got one minute to either get her to your house or your or she. This is when y'all were oh. dating. 
yeah, yeah. To get yeah. to your house or her house. And why? Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Okay. And action! Hey, Ronnie. It's Tony. Mm. What you doing? Mm. Ah. So, um, you hungry? You are? Mm. I got this restaurant I want to check out. You want to go? Yeah? Bet. I'm on my way. I don't need a whole minute and 30 seconds player. Man. I got it locked out in 30. But, but, but okay. that I don't was, need. That was, that I was locked out. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't need a that minute was locked. Seconds. That was locked out at dinner. Listen, I said, listen, you had to do a house. Oh, but I had to, to go to her house, house to yeah. get her player. Yeah, and then we don't go are, nowhere. Oh, you ain't had that part. Damn. You ain't had that part. I love it. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. Look here, man. Ain't no other place. Yeah, me. Ain't no other place give you, <laughs> give you, a, give you a, a, a swag bag, no. brother. That's no, all man. Right I got here. a swag bag, and yes. I can keep this. I'm not going to take it out no, the camera. No, no, you get no, no, no. Damn. 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 <laughs> but I'm going to send you a shirt because I didn't know how buff you was and okay. shit. You know, I, I had a medium for you, but I see you, you know, you've been working out, so I'm going to get you a podcast <laughs> shirt. I, I really will. All right, that's what's up. I appreciate it. I don't want to have you on my show. Let's do it. So I'm developing the Tony Terry show where we're, uh, I'm developing the Tony Terry show right. where we're focusing on, you know, it's a platform where I want to create a safe space okay. like you have mm -hmm, sure. that um, we are comfortable with being vulnerable and talking to each other and okay. edifying each other, sure. and educating each I like other that. in a way that society told us that we could not do. There it is. You know what I'm saying? There it is. We can't we can nurture each other. And I don't mean in, I'm saying just by giving you information that you don't have. Mm -hmm. You know, and break the break the, the the stigma that's attached to, you know, me asking you how you doing right. and then you really tell me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Cuz right, when right. you say how you doing, fine. Right. Right. right? No, 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 and no. That, no, no, I, 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 I don't say I'm fine. I haven't said that in a long time. I'm either good or I'm not. And if you want to know why I'm good, right. then we'll talk about it. If you don't, but, but. Right. But, but that's why I try to get here on the show, my show, you know, because we can say, I've been through it all. I've been up, down. I have told yeah. you, I'm mega bus. I've been broke. A, so I try to let people know that I've been it's all okay. those things, too. Just not mega bus. Right, right, right. Trump, Trump shuttle. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, but yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? So, so that, I, I have tried to have this place here because um, it's just, you know, I, I, I try to give you flowers. I enjoy what you've done. I want to give the props because people feel like yeah. if you ain't hot today, you ain't valuable. And that's right. bullshit, man. Right. You know what and I'm that's saying? dope, bro. Yeah, and, uh, so that's, that's what this but place I want is I want to ask for. you a question. How did you come up with Panic Room? And you know why? I'll show you. Easy. Room. You know what Panic Room is? It's the word no is space. It's, it's a space. It's a man. safe space. Hold up now. You just said it. Come on, player. I that's why. You. Do I have to repeat I, it? Right? I that's got you. This is a safe space to come talk to me. Once I said it out loud, it all became clear. Okay, sometimes it takes that. Never mind. Okay. Never ask me a question you should know. <laughs> yeah. But there's a book in there, the coffee yeah. cup mug. All this is kinds. dope, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a do rag. I don't know if you wear do rag yeah, I, I, or your wife or whatever. I'm, yeah, I'm letting my hair grow off. Yeah, yeah, there you go. A book in there. So I know you're a reader. Yes. Read that title, boy. Look at that, boy. Look at that kind of book I'm giving you, man. What did that title say? My 100 homies and phonies of Hollywood. Ooh, I met a lot of people in Hollywood. I'm already intrigued. I, look, I, 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 I number one New York Times bestseller. No, read it again. You don't read well. Wait a minute. What do you mean? What am I? What am I? See, he don't read well. I say, oh, my bad. My read. number one New York Times bestseller, my 100 Boy, homies. I can't have you on my show no more. What? The, what's the last word on it, man, on the top of the line? What's the last word? Hollywood. No, the uh, top line. This boy's hard. Teller. Best you, teller. You see, you keep saying Best. teller. What is, it's teller. Best teller. You kept saying teller. The first time I no, did, the player, second time the, you and really maybe the third. The third time. But now so, I see it. Yeah, I'm saying say best teller. So Duke Ellington is for 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 talent. For of, music. Of yeah, it ain't for education. Not for reading. There it is. Okay. 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 Yeah, you did write a Trump Tower. Listen, times. but let me tell you Trump. something. My grandmother, mm -hmm. she dropped out of school at 12, okay. but she had an amazing command of the English language, and she insisted that her children speak well. Her children, not her grandchildren. Well, nigga, okay. you can't read, motherfucker, okay? Yeah. I got love for the grandchildren, but not you. You know what, And then yeah. get passed down. I was fucking with you. <laughs> no, was that what? And now I'm not. Well, who are you talented, boy? You, were, you acted better just then than I've ever seen you act before fucking with me. I heard it. It's best seller. Best teller. Tell best teller. I tell it all. Yes, yeah, yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah, it. Yeah. That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, appreciate it so much, man. I really, hey, man, Tony Terry, thank you so much thank for coming on the show, me, man. man. I was really, I really excited about having you, man. I think the fans are going to love it, man. Leave in the comments what y'all feel about the show, man. Again, 
you know, much success, man. Thank with you, the Emmy, congratulations. Thank you. Either with the educational situation and the helping mental health is it's really yes. serious in the black community. Absolutely. And I like the fact you stand up for it. I'll come on your show and we can chop it up, man. Please. And we can Thank tell you. And we'll go from there. Yo, thanks. Another episode of PS Panic Room. You know how we do, <laughs> man. It's always a boss situation. We had a boss on there. R&B legend, okay? R&B legend. That's not easy to be a legend. Yeah, I, I do it all the time, so I, I, I know how the difficulty of it is. But give it up. I'm going to say, Tony Terry, one more time. Give it up for Tony Thank Terry. you, brother. Thank you. Tell everybody where they can reach you at on social media. Uh, IG at I am Tony Terry 1. That other guy, I am Tony Terry. That's the only one I got. Yeah, that's all, all you yeah, need. That, and and my, 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 my work email is I am Tony Terry at Gmail. If you want to book your boy, holla at me. There it is right there. Hey, y'all, another episode of PS Panic Room. Thank you so much. Don't forget to hit the notification bell or the uh, subscription button or whatever it is. You know, just hit the button to keep watching. <laughs> I appreciate y'all always telling me how much y'all like this show when I'm on the street. You really appreciate it. I appreciate you appreciating it. I appreciate my guests coming on, giving me your time. Tell me some backstories, man. I love it. Again, thank y'all so much, and I'll catch you on the next episode. Pierre's Panic Room. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm Tony Terry, and I survived Pierre's Panic Room. You did. If you like that show, like, subscribe, and comment below. You know, hit the, hit the notification bell. Hit the subscribe button, man. We want you around. Appreciate it.